found our way through the book of Revelations, and uh, today we're going to be looking at two chapters, chapter 8 and, verse, and chapter 9, um, so we're kind of excelling to move through this, and um, you know, the book of Revelation, it was a vision given to uh, the Apostle John, he was exiled to Patmos uh, for his faith, and uh, the vision was given to him, and uh, sometimes in the vision there's metaphors and there's allegories and sometimes there's things that are hard to understand. And uh, as a pastor, I was like, Lord, can I stop here and go back onto some topical study? And uh, so I need prayer because uh, these are tough, tough messages. Uh, tough to understand, but uh, as I study through it, it's a great blessing because what it does do is reveal God's heart in it. You know, a lot of us get scared because we think of uh, demonic forces and things that are transpiring and what will become of this earth. How many know that all the things that God does is good? Amen. And he, all he wants is the best for humanity and for us. And we don't see that sometimes, especially when we're on the wrong side of God. We think that God is out to punish. God is just out to lay judgment. God is just up there right, ready to throw uh, his lightning bolt and soar humanity. And it's so far from the truth when you start to study the scripture that it is God wants to give every opportunity and every chance for all humanity to be saved and be with him because he loves them. See, God loves everyone. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave every opportunity. And guess what? And these messages... Uh, I've been watching God unfold His love. And so, in chapters 8 and 9, if you were just to glean through that and say, wow, man, there's, there's all kinds of things, cosmic disturbances, and the earth is rattling, and things from heaven are being thrown to earth, and I just don't want to read anymore. But when we start to unfold this, we see that it's God's mercy. We see that God relents over and over and over again and stops the destruction and gives an opportunity. Even to those that are most vile and most wicked and murderers and God stops and waits for them to repent. See, that is our God. See, we, we don't recognize that sometimes. Sometimes we just think that God is just going to do a one and done. But as I start to see the unfolding of this, we see His mercy. Over and over and over again. Do you know that the cries of our heart are stored in heaven? They, God is waiting to dispatch the cries of your heart. The, the title of the message today is Prayers That Reach Heaven. Do you know that they're in heaven? God hears immediately, but sometimes... There's a time frame. You know, his timing is not our timing. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are perfect. And so is his timing. You see, when he taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. Uh, we're not praying so we can get a hold of God's reluctancy in heaven. No. When we pray, we get a hold, we get a hold of God's willingness. God wants to answer your prayers, but it's in his time. Because unlike me, he's multitasker. <laughs> I can only do one thing at once. You know, but God's able to do multiple things, and he's working in us what is pleasing to him, and he's working other things out because least no one shall perish. Like I said, if God were just to go ahead and, and send down fire from heaven like that, then all would be consumed. You know what it says in, uh, that if it wasn't for his great love, we all would be consumed. All of us. Thank God for his love and his mercy for us. So I need prayer, and uh, I would like us to pray for understanding when we start to, to hear about the keys to the abyss and smoke goes up and demonic forces roam the earth. Whoa, what is happening? And I'll speak a little bit on that today. So if you would turn with me to chapter 8 of the book of Revelations, and we're just going to read the first four verses, and then we'll go on from there. If everybody turns with me, please. And you'll understand why many stay clear of the book of Revelation. But I've 
found it to be great <laughs> encouragement because I'm getting to understand God a little more through this. Before, I would just close my ears and my eyes. Oh, God, I can't understand what this destruction. How can be a loving and merciful God and allow all this to happen? Guess what? God doesn't want things to happen. And what he does is he relinquishes his determined will sometimes in a sense that allows other things to transpire for the good of humanity. And that's hard for us as humans to understand that God's ways aren't our ways, that, his he that the heavens are much higher than the earth. So listen to the first four verses here. Uh, remember last few weeks we were going through the uh, first six seals. This is the seventh seal now. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about a half an hour. There's a pause as if it's getting ready for something or a great event, which we shall, shall see. And we'll unfold that. And then it says in verse 2, I saw seven angels who stood before the Lord, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of the saints upon the golden altar, which were before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God and from the angel's hand. Verse 5 with me. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and he threw it to the earth. And there was noises, thundering, <coughs> lightning, earthquakes. And let's stop there for a moment. God, I stop, and I pause, and I pray for great understanding of what has transpired. I pray for every believer and every one who may not be a believer today. God, that you would give us a greater understanding to your word, to see your great love in these passages. And so, Father, I'll thank you beforehand, for you have always been faithful. And we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. It's not uncommon uh, that God's uh, will is moved by the prayers of his people. It's not uncommon that God is listening for his people as you pray your prayers. But he waits for the time, for the perfect time, as I said, for God to move. And even back when, uh, let me just stop here for a moment. When we look at scripture from Genesis to Revelation, there's always parallels. And what we're going to start to look at here, there's parallels with the plagues of Egypt and the cries of God's people crying in their suffering. And God answering that and coming to deliver his people out of bondage. And so God here in this passage, as we see that these prayers have been stored up there that go before the Lord as incense. Uh, do you know that it is a sweet, sweet thing to God is your prayers? David says it like this. He says, let my prayers be like incense and let my lifting of my hands be like the evening sacrifice we see in the Psalms. So it, God hears, it's a sweet aroma when you pray unto God that, he, that your believers uh, knowing that your prayers are going right to the throne because it says this, that eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, how you righteous by the blood of the Lord, the, the, the Lamb, Jesus Christ, and his ears are attentive to your prayers. That's what the, the Bible tells us. So these prayers are lifted up to heaven. The angel uh, here brings them before the Lord, and now God dispatches some destruction upon the earth, which is known in the book of Revelation, the sounding of the trumpets, the trumpet judgments. We're going to see seven trumpets that are going to be blown. 
And they're starting here in verse 6. So the angel who had the seven trumpets prepared the sound. In verse 7, the first angel sounded and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood. And they were thrown to the earth and a third of the trees were burned up and all of the green grass was burned up. I'll stop there. We say, wow. Here, judgment is starting to fall upon the earth. What is going on on upon the earth? Well, you just we're going to scan this. Follow with me. Verse 8, the second angel sounded. It's something like a great mountain burning that was thrown. Verse 10, the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch, and it fell on a third of the rivers and the springs of the water, and the name of the star was Wormwood, which means bitter, by the way. Verse 12, then the fourth angel star, uh, sounded, and a third of the sun struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars. And a third of them were darkened. And on that day, it did not shine, likewise the night. And then verse 13, And then I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet." that the three angels are about to sail. We're going to stop there for a moment. So these four trumpets are blown and there seems like there's cosmic disturbance upon the earth. It may sound to some that here it's just natural uh, inclement weather happening with earthquakes and famines and, and pestilence and destructions and lightning bolts that are happening upon the earth. And some may say, well, you know what? That's just... Uh, common to our earth's atmosphere. That's just the way things are. I'm here to tell you, no, God is sovereign over all that. You know, the tornadoes and the earthquakes and the things that you see today, God's hand is in them. He's the creator of those things. Some may say, well, I don't believe it. I just believe it's inclement weather. You see, Jesus said the signs that were given in the end would be what? Earthquakes, famines, pestilence, tornadoes. They will increase in the latter days. In the past 50 years, we had the most increased category four and five tornadoes that ever been in existence. They say, well, back in the 1840s, you know, on the other side, and they have those that say climate is changing because of uh, what do they call it? Global warming. And you know, uh, there's some, there's some, uh, I guess you would say, uh, how uh, the scientists say with the, if the water's warm in the atmospheres and the, and the, but all those things, God is sovereign. That's why uh, I chose to have Larry read a little bit of scripture from the book of Job. And if you ever get a chance to read from Job uh, 37 through 40, and it talks about who is that who darkens my counsel? Who is that who uh, comes to me and, and questions uh, my authority? See, God is sovereign over our weather. He's sovereign over the heavens and the earth. And so, Larry, read uh, for us. In the book of Job, chapter 37, we'll read verses 5 through 14. God thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, which we cannot comprehend. For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth. Likewise to the small rain and to the great rain of his strength. He seals up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into dens and remain in their places. Out of the south come the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. By the breath of God, frost is given, and the breath of the waters is straightened. Also by watering, he wearieth the thick cloud, and scattereth his bright cloud. And it is turned round about by his counsels, 
that they may do whatsoever he commanded them upon the face of the world in the earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job. Weeks Town Community Congregation. Larry. Hearken unto this, O Job, and stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Amen. That's some profound scripture there. You see that? Why God uses the weather to bless us, but also it says to bring correction. I still think that God's shooting across the bow of humanity. Wake up! <laughs> Wake up! I'm sovereign. I'm in charge. I love you, but you know what? I'm a just God. And judgment is coming. Many just say, hmm, I don't trust that. I don't believe that. Remember, we looked last week about scoffers. They say, where's this coming of the Lord? I don't really trust that or believe that. I'm going to rely on myself. You would think, well, God will say, all right, done with you. But he's not. Guess what happens now when we go to chapter 9? He sends these co uh, cosmic disturbances throughout the earth, thinking that humanity would wake up. But you and I both know, we turn the news channel on and we see the things that are going wrong, we just change it. We see what's happening over there, and, uh, you know, these uh, great storms over that have been uh, unprecedented, you know, there in Puerto Rico and the, the devastation that's happening upon the earth. Uh, when we don't see it in our little uh, area of influence, we, we, we think it's far off and then we don't need to be bothered with it, but it's Friends, it's near. It's near us. And uh, we have to understand that um, I believe they're wake-up calls. God's saying, wake up to humanity. Wake up. <clears throat> now, uh, looking between the, the, the seventh seal and going into the trumpet, uh, we uh, as uh, uh, pre-millennial believers believe that the church now is with the Lord in heaven. The prayer to the saint, we're with God in heaven looking down as John was looking at the vision of, of this cataclysmic uh, destruction that started upon the earth. Now, those who are remaining on the earth, they're not Boy Scouts and they're not Girl Scouts, friends. Sometimes we think, well, how can God allow some of those things to be relinquished on mankind. They're not Boy Scouts. They're not Girl Scouts. They're sexual and moral. They're murderers. They're deceived. Deceivers, there are those who just rejected the things of God, and uh, God has given opportunity again. So let's see in chapter 9, you would think, well, God will be done with them. It's all over. No, he gives another opportunity. Guess what? Follow me. Chapter 9. Then the fifth angel. Remember we saw in the last uh, verse of chapter 8, woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because the remaining blast of the trumpet uh, of the three angels is about the sound. These were the first four were what? <coughs> Weather judgments. This now is the other three judgments are scary in a way. But I'm going to tell you uh, demons are going to be released. Do you know that I said that Satan is on a leash? You see, he can only go thus far. Just like God says to the waves of the sea, you go this far and no more. He says that to Satan also, you could go this far and no more. But it seems in this passage that we're going to look at, he lets the leash out a little further. How many know that, <clears throat> we're going to look at a passage of scripture, but sometimes our own punishment is the due penalty for our own perversion. You see, our own demons. You see, uh, without Christ, we, we have a demonic thought because we're anti-Christ, we're without Christ, and we want to be against Christ. Jesus said, you're either with me or against me. Right? <clears throat> you, many say we're on neutrality ground. Uh, I'm not one or the other friend. You either belong to Christ or you belong to the evil one. That's what the scriptures tell us. You see? And <clears throat> before Christ, I'll say this, Following self-will, run riot. Following the desires of my own flesh. They were evil desires, but I was influenced by other things. 
The Bible says that we're influenced either by our own evil desires, the world system, or the devil himself. What I'm getting at, friends, apart from Christ, we all deal with demons. No, I said, that's not spooky. But uh, you know anyone who opens themselves up to Pandora's box. By the way, that's a, myth, that's a Greek mythology if you never knew what Pandora's box was. Pandora was uh, the first known woman that Zeus created. Uh, this is Greek mythology. And you've heard of Pandora's box. That all the evil is in there. And uh, actually it was a jar, per se. And the jar was open and the evil came out. This is just mythology, right? But you think about when we open ourselves up to evil, how many demons are let loose? Right? Do you, do you know anyone who ever has been addicted to drugs? Have you known anyone who ever been addicted to uh, alcoholism or pornography or life controlling problems or materialism? These are, are the demons that haunt humanity. You see, they'll take you further, deeper, darker than you ever thought. They'll take you to places you thought you'd never go. They get you around people you thought you'd never be around. They take you to do things that you thought you would never do. Believe me, I had them. You see, when I followed my own ways, they brought me to places that I thought I would never go. Now, <clears throat> God, now this is hard to understand here, but let's go through it. Follow me. The fifth angel, chapter 9. And I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. What's the bottomless pit? The abyss, right? And he opened the bottomless pit, and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of a great furnace. So the sun and the air darkened. Because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke, locusts came upon the earth. And to them was given power as scorpions of the earth have power. Now, again, this is a vision being seen, right? Verse 4. They were commanded, look, not to harm the grass of the earth or anything, any green thing, or any tree, but only those men, watch this, who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They weren't allowed to touch anyone who belonged to God, praise the Lord. You see, demons are getting released, but they can't touch anyone who belongs to God. Now listen to the verse 5. And they were given authority to kill them, but, no, I'm sorry, let me read that verse over. They were not given authority to kill them. You see that verse 5? But to torment them for five months. The torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, look at verse 6, men will seek death and they will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. Have you ever known someone who has been bound over that he was looking to destroy even himself. All through scripture we see those that have been demonic possessed. The young boy tried to throw himself into the fire or into the water to destroy himself. These demonic spirits that are embodied in this metaphor here of locusts. By the way, when you read the plagues of Egypt, these kind of follow those things. Just as we read in chapter 8, the cataclysmic uh, destruction, just like Sodom and Gomorrah, the fire raining down from heaven. These Locusts, per se, demons is what they are. Do you notice that it says there that, uh, verse 1, it says, and a star had fallen from heaven to him. You see that? He's the king of these locusts, our demonic spirits. And we're going to see that 
Um, they were given the power. Now, who gave them the power? Well, really, God is allowing them to do what demons like to do, destroy us. They were really doing what they want to do to us right now, rob, kill, and destroy us. But God has a shield, a seal around you and I, but some don't. Some open themselves up to Pandora's in this box. What I'm getting at, friends, if you don't know Christ today, you're opening yourself up to all kinds of things on the dark side. You, you, you're opening yourself up to things that are not your friends. They, they promise you pleasure. They promise you uh, freedom. But all it is is bondage. All it is is destruction. Uh, we're going to find out the name of this king uh, who is over them. His name is uh, Apollon or Abaddon in Hebrew. And that means destroyer, both in Greek and Hebrew. And I think it was a play on the Greek uh, god Apollo at that point. Do you know, <clears throat> Satan's not your friend, friends. He wants to destroy you and destroy me. And the problem is God created us with free will. He, he doesn't force us to bow down and worship him. He draws us with his love and his kindness. And we have within us, apart from him, no power over the dark things of this age. In the book of Romans, I'm going to have Joey read a number of verses for us. Where God's mercy, his love is being revealed from heaven over and over and over again through provision, through creation around us through everything that he has given us here for our pleasure. And when men and women deny that and fail to give him thanks and worship him, he says in three and four different places, we're going to have Joey read this, he gave them over. When he says giving them over, giving them over to their own depravity. See, our own worst enemies right here. When you're, you have no power uh, against the flesh, unless Christ delivers you. Otherwise, it's going to take you further, deeper, and longer. And then you're opening up Pandora's box, and all evil breaks forth. Now, just listen clearly to Romans 1, uh, New Testament, verse 18 through 32. Listen clearly to this, and... and uh, if you hear what the Word of God is saying, it's actually transpiring before our very eyes, is it not? Romans 1, verse 18 through 32. Romans 1, 18 through 32. Please, I would hope and pray you guys would open Bibles and follow me with this, because this is not just Pastor Bob's thought. Some of you may think, well, Pastor Bob, he's, he's saying a lot of nonsense up there. No, this is what the Word of God says. And the Bible says that and if you reject this, you're not rejecting man, you're rejecting God who gives you the Holy Spirit. You see? So don't reject this. Uh, this is truth to set you free. Uh, this is truth to, to have you know how humanity is ticking. And uh, so look at what uh, we hear in these, these uh, 12 <laughs> verses. Go ahead, Joe. You want to come up and read them, Joe? Because these are very important verses. And then hopefully we'll... Now, let me clarify, this is not scary, is it? Matter of fact, this is God's mercy. Did you see what happened? He was shooting over the warning bell. People may repent. They didn't repent. Now, he said he opens, allows the abyss to be opened with the demons a little more leash to go out and torment people so that they would what? Repent. Not so they'd be destroyed. You see that? They weren't destroyed so they would repent. You and I know that we're, we are... We are converted, but we are motivated by heat and transformed by fire. Let me say it again. We're motivated by heat and transformed by fire. We don't really get moving until the heat's on, right? We really don't get moving until, until the heat is turned up a little bit. So, ooh, now nah, I'm not going to get moving. <laughs> you know, we're complacent. 
So God allows the heat come for some of those stubborn ones. I, I was never like that. <laughs> I was never stubborn. God said jump, and I said okay. No, as a matter of fact, it was the opposite. Uh, the demonic thing said jump, and I said how high, and because that's what it says in, in uh, Romans six. It says that you know we have been all laid over to disobedience. That uh, you know there was a dominion over us, a power over us greater than us. And uh, the only thing to break that is Christ. And when Christ breaks that, now we're no longer under that power. Praise the Lord. Read, read the verses. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Romans 1, 18 through 32. For the wrath of God is revealed in heaven <clears throat> against all ungodliness. <clears throat> The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the in incorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them, gave them up to uncleanliness and the lust of their hearts, to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, and worshiped and served the Creator, the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to wild passions, for even their women exchanged the, <clears throat> the natural use for what is, a, is against nature. Likewise, the men, leaving the natural use of women, burn their lust for one, one another. Men with men committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. And even as they, they did, even as they did not like to retain God in their, in their knowledge, God gave them over to debased mind, to do things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous, the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do, this, do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. When God had his blessing to his holy word, and like I said, they're not Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. <laughs> God is trying to get their attention, okay? And he says he gives them over. What does that mean? To our own evil desires. If you read in scripture. Uh, for instance, I'll give you one passage. Write it down and read this so you don't think that I'm going to say this. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 5, verse 5. It says this. There was a man who had his father's wife in the scripture. And the Corinthian church was proud of it. The apostle Paul says, shouldn't you be... Uh, disappointed in these actions? He says, give that man over to Satan so that his flesh will be destroyed and his soul will be saved in the day of redemption. That's a powerful verse, isn't it? Give a man over to Satan. Why? Because wanting his soul to be saved and the, the flesh to be destroyed. Let me explain that a little bit. What is it a man to gain this whole world and yet lose his soul? What is, 
what we pray sometimes for individuals. We want them to get well, and we want them to physically be well, and, and heal them here, and that's all great and good. But if their souls are not saved, they're going to be separate from the life of God for eternity. So our prayer is, Lord, that you would save their souls. What is a man to get well, put it this way, come back from a heart attack or, or so on, and just lose his soul into eternity? What is it? The most important thing is that their soul would be saved. That's why Apostle Paul said, this man, he's depraved, he's far advanced, give him over to his own depravity. Maybe, just maybe, he'll cry out to the Lord through the demons that have him. You follow me? If you understand, when did you cry out to God? Probably in the darkest points of your life, amen? Probably after following your own self-will and run riot. Probably in the deepest, darkest place you cried out to God because we uh, had no other place to go. And it's somehow, some way, uh, God allowed us to go our way, just like the prodigal son. The prodigal left the father's house and he ended up in the pig pen. He ended up doing, he went to the school of hard knocks, my friend. And sometimes you and I have to go to the school of hard knocks so that our souls will be saved for the day of redemption because God loves you that much. And he loves humanity that much. So sometimes, you know, you need to be uh, disciplined by our own disobedience. It's judgment, judging, uh, it's evil judging evil. And that's what you see in the book of Romans. God said three times he gave them over. He gave them over. He gave them over. The self will run right. Go in the destruction of themselves. But God wasn't done with them. God wasn't done with them on earth. And I'm just going to close quickly back to chapter 9. By the way, we could have broke this up into a lot of places. Uh, so you see the release of... Uh, the vision of these locusts upon the earth, and they were there to go ahead and instruct terror into those that are on earth. Continue on uh, verse 11, it says, When they had a king over them, looked at the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in Hebrew was what? Abaddon, I explained that to you. Uh, both in Greek uh, has the name Apollon, and one woe has passed. Remember I read in chapter 7, watch out, three woes are going to be... Uh, release. This is only the first well. Now, let me push us all the way up to the last couple verses of this chapter so we can close with this. Although God is sending destruction upon the earth or allowing it to be to happen, do you know that uh, you know, you have those global warmists that say that, you know, it's, it's because of humanity uh, that the, the earth is being destroyed and will be destroyed. You know what? There's some truth in what they're saying. <laughs> I can say it only this because we're our own worst enemies. Right? Um, so God wants to wake humanity up because he has a paradise for us, but we reject it. Now look at verse 20 through 20. One, and we'll just close with this. But the rest of mankind, they weren't killed by these plagues. There was a number of more plagues that were given in chapter 9. You're going to need to read them on your own. And look what it says. But the rest of mankind were not killed by these plagues, did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons. They shouldn't worship demons. That's what it's saying here. And idols of gold, silver, and brass, and stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear or walk. And now verse 21 is, it confounds my mind. Looks at what it says. And they did not repent of their murders, of their sorcerers, their sexual immorality, or their thefts. All those things they knew came from the hand of God, and yet refused to repent of them. They refused to give God glory. They were more in love with their idols and the worship of things that cannot see nor uh, could hear. And friends, uh, sometimes we say, well, you know what? They were they worshiping statues where they're worshiping, uh, you know, in some context that could be. But you know what? In today's context, it could be materialism, it could be money, it could be your... your uh, 
your self-will, it could be, uh, you know, the things uh, of this age. You know, he, he num says a couple things there. And I was looking in the Greek, sexual immorality, you know. Uh, the word is uh, pornea. You know what that means? Pornography. You know, that's what that is. See, pornography has a grip on America uh, you would not imagine. Even in, in the church, you know, there are those that won't let go because they're in the grip of pornography. And they're, they're in the bondage of it. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the magical uh, worshiping of demons and idols and, uh, it has to do with those that, you know, uh, uh, sorcerers and those sort of things. You know, with, with the word uh, is uh, pharmakia, which is what they call uh, the mixing of potions, you know. And there's so many today that are so bound over with the mixing of potions. Uh, the fentanyls and the heroines and the things of that nature that are bound over to it. You see, they can't get loose and they're worshiping the things and they, uh, you know, God doesn't want that. God wants us free from all that. No, you know, so there are going to be those that are still not going to turn to the Lord, my friend, unfortunately. But that, for you and I, remain praying, remain believing, and God's heart is that all humanity, as you see, these things start to release. God has given one grace after the next. One grace after the next. Do you see that in there? There was three graces given. He's more patient than you and I might be, right? He doesn't want... And these are not Boy Scouts. These are not Girl Scouts. These are those who have just thumbed their nose at God and rejected all of His goodness and His mercy and they just keep saying, no, no, we don't want it. We want our idols. We love our idols more. We want to worship demons. We'd rather be with them. And that is a sad state. And that's what the scriptures are saying. That's the commentary. You see? Now you know why Pastor Bob doesn't want to preach this. Yeah. It's much easier to preach from Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the word is here. And we can't deny it or reject it. Matter of fact, we get down into the last chapter. It says, anyone who withholds or adds to it, a curse be on it. Let's pray. Let's Father, we thank you, Lord. I pray that... Uh, some understanding was given today, oh God. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to reveal to us these truths. I pray, Lord, that each individual here would understand that it is your goodness and it is your mercy. That you don't want one to perish, but you also have given us a free will. And many have rejected the hand of grace. Our heart is, oh God, that family members, loved ones, co-workers, neighbors, Lord, would hear the message and turn to you. Father, as you continue to warn us from heaven, Lord, we thank you and praise you, and uh, I pray for each one here today, Lord, if someone's here who has never given their life to Christ, maybe they have given lip service, but never have given their heart, I pray this be the day of their salvation. Draw them unto yourself, help them to say yes to Jesus and no to themselves. God bless each one here, Father. Grant them your peace, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.